Here are the answers. Keep in mind these are five points each. Everything over here in the smaller boxes are one point each. Your lottery is one, six, ten, two, five. Homework answers from last night. There they are, all ten of them. Here's the extra credit. Same directions as the homework answers. Things like this could come up with a different answer and still be correct. If in doubt, then you must ask. These are three points each. Today, we will add and subtract rational expressions. Before we do that, you must remember how to add and subtract fractions, just on a basic level. We will go here and start with a basic fraction. 3 over 4 plus 5 over 6. And here come some questions. What must I do first to add these fractions together. What's my first step? She's not here, so we'll go to the next one. We'll leave her out. And uh, Gaffney is first. What do I do first? Pass. He's going to pass. Uh, Applegate B, what do I do first? Don't you make the denominators or something? Yes, you find the common denominators. So Applegate gets a point. So what, what will be my common denominator for this fraction? And that goes to Lewis, who is not here. And we'll leave her out. Dietrich, what are the, the common denominators here? She's going to pass. Sexton, the common denominator. 12 is right. We could use a 12. 12 is the least common multiple of 4 and 6. If you don't remember to to how to find least common multiples, you just list out the factors. Like this. 4, 8, or not the factors, but the multiples. 4, 8, 12, 16, and then 6, 12, 18, and look what they show up with. A 12 is the lowest one in common. What number goes in this spot? What number goes in that spot, Davis? Nine is right. And how do we come up with a nine in that spot, uh, Blake? She's going to pass. How do we come up with a nine in that spot, Collins? <laughs> how do we come up with a nine in that spot, Howard? How do we come up with a 9 in that spot, Rayburn? You have to times it by 3 because that's what you times the 4 by. That's right. If we multiply 4 by 3 to get the 12, then we have to multiply 3 by 3 to get the 9. So that goes to Rayburn. All right. What number goes in this spot, Johnson? 10 is right, yes. 10 is right, and... How do we get a 10 in that spot? She's not here, so we'll leave her out. How do we get a 10 in that spot? Call it. Oh, okay. You multiply by 2. That's right, because 6 times 2 is 12, and then you multiply 5 by 2 to get the 10. When I add these fractions together, when I add the fractions together, what do I get? Applegate M. 19 over 12 is right. How did I get... 19 over 12, Jones. Add 9 and 10, that's right. What is this answer as a mixed number, Smith? Yeah, whatever you need to do. What is 19 over 12 as a mixed number? What is 19 over 12 as a mixed number? She's not here. We'll leave her out. And that goes to Murray. What is 19 over 12 as a mixed number? Applegate M. Dang it. 
1 and 7 twelfths. How do I get 1 and 7 twelfths? Call it. Oh, because 12, 12 goes into 19 one time, and then you would take 19 minus 12 and get the 7 left over. That's right. So 1 and 7 twelfths. Now that we have that review of adding and subtracting fractions out of the way, here is the first example. It is 2 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 1. What is the first thing I need to do on this problem, Dietrich? Find the common denominator. That is right. If I don't know the common denominator, if I have two items in front of me and I have no clue what the common denominator is, how can I quickly find it, Applegate B? Nope. How could I find the denominate, common denominator for any two fractions, no matter what the denominators are, by doing it really quick? Gaffney. He's going to pass. We'll go to Sexton. He'll pass. We'll go to Smith. Uh, not cross multiply. Cross multiplying goes like that. So how about Blake? What would we do? All right, we'll go to Howard. Johnson, what would we do? You do what? Uh, not the multiples. Jones, what would we do? Yes, multiply across the bottom. That's it. So Jones has that. If I multiply across the bottom, what would I come up with on the left-hand side? What's my common denominator, in other words, if I multiply these two together? And that goes to Davis. If I multiply the two bottoms together, what would I have? X squared plus 3? Uh, no. What would we have, Murray? What would we have, Rayburn? It's simpler than what you're all making it. X squared plus 4x plus 3 is right, and I'll give you a point for that, but there's a simpler way to write it. What is the simpler way to write it, Collins? Ah, so we'll put them back in the cup. No, oh, we'll go to Davis. What's the simpler way to write it other than x squared plus 4x plus 3? No. Whoop. What would we write in a more simpler fashion there, Blake? How could we write x plus 3 times x plus 1 more simply, Johnson? How about Collins? How about uh, Applegate M? How about Rayburn? That's right, yes. I just said, I've literally been saying that for five minutes. X plus three, X plus one. The world does not revolve around a single individual person. Everybody gets their opportunity when the stick comes still, out to answer. I still don't understand. You're multiplying these two together to get a common denominator. It may not be the least one, but it is a common denominator. It's the same thing as doing this. We'll go over to the scrap piece of paper over here. If I had 5 over 6 plus 1 over 4... What is the least common denominator? 12. 12. But what if I didn't know that? And I didn't know my multiples of 6 and 4, but I did have a calculator. I could just multiply these together and get 24. I can still add the fractions if I have a denominator of 24, can I? Yeah, so I have to do by 4 there. So by 4 here would give me 20, and by 5 there, or not 5, but by 6 there would give me 24 and by 6 there would give me 6. So it's the same thing, same process over here. What would my denominator be on the right-hand side at the bottom? Smith. 
what would my denominator be on the right hand side on the bottom, Dietrich? What's my denominator on the right hand side at the bottom, Applegate B? Is it the same thing? It's the same thing, yes. All right, so you would have x plus 3 and x plus 1. How would I figure out what goes in this numerator spot here? Can anybody answer that? And that goes to Jones. She'll pass. Uh, Gaffney. And we'll go to Murray. We'll go to Collett. Would you multiply across the top or not? You would not multiply across the top, no. Think back over to this example here. On the bottom, when I had this 6 here, to get the common denominator of 24, I multiplied it by 4 over there. So if I multiply this by 4, then I must do something to the top, which is multiply by 4. So using that same reasoning over here, what would my, denom or what would my numerator be? What do I have to multiply this by? I'll even rephrase the question. What do I multiply this by to get my numerator there, Howard? Uh, you have to multiply it by x plus 3 and x plus 1. No, you, can, you don't multiply it by both of them, but you're getting close. Sexton. <coughs> no, you would not set it to equal to 0 and multiply by 2. How about call it? Okay, it'd be... Um, 2x plus 2, right, because you multiply it by x plus 1? That's right. You would multiply the 2 on the top by what you multiplied the bottom by to get that denominator. We already had an x plus 3, and we had to multiply it by x plus 1 to get the denominator. So what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So we have 2 times x plus 1 on the top. Now, over on this side... What would I multiply the 3 by in order to come up with that new numerator? And that goes to Jones. X plus 3 is right because we had to multiply x plus 1 by x plus 3 to get our denominator. So what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. All right. I have mistakenly written a 1 there. That should be a 3. That's right. So 3 times the quantity x plus 3. So now we're coming up with the next step. I have my common denominators. I have my numerators. Think back to the basic example of adding fractions. What would my next step be? Gaffney. What would my next step be, Howard? Uh, what would the next step be, Murray? Simplify is right. We can do that. So we will simplify the top. Instead of 2, x, two times x plus 1, what would happen if I distributed the 2 through the x plus 1 here? What would I come up with, Sexton? That's right, 2x plus 2. And what would I get if I simplified the right side numerator and distributed the 3 through the x plus 3? Blake. J Johnson. 3x plus 3 is right. Or 3x plus 9. Oh, we'll give it to her anyway. 3x plus 9. Well, I couldn't hear you. You're, you're, you speak too softly. I've got to be able to hear you if you speak up. So now we have our numerators in place. What can I put as the denominator in both cases, uh, Davis? Uh, you could. What? How would you simplify? Not x squared plus three. What could I put as my denominator, Dietrich? Pass. What could I put as my denominator, Rayburn? Yeah, x squared plus 4x plus 3. That's right. And we get that by multiplying these two together. You 
x times x is x squared, and then x times 1 is x, 3 times x is 3x, add those together to get 4x, and then 3 times 1 is 3. So you put those in both cases. All right, so now what do I do next? And this is going to go to Collins. Tony, you got to watch the screen. Oh, you have a monitor on your desk, let me guess. Applegate M, what would I do next? I think you add across the top. Yeah, you would add across the top, so we'll give that to her. And when I add across the top, we're going to end up with one fraction. What is the result of adding this with this? And that goes to Applegate B. 5x plus 11 is right. And what do I put underneath that fraction as the denominator, Smith? Huh? All right, so we'll go to uh, who next here? Applegate B. Um, you put x squared plus 4x plus 3 in parentheses and put in squared. Uh, close. I will have to go to the next one. Murray, what would I put as my denominator? What would I put as my denominator, Gaffney? What do I put as my denominator, Davis? X squared plus 4x plus 3. Yes, x squared plus 4x plus 3. It's the same thing. I thought there was two of them squared. No. You're adding. It's no different than doing this. We'll go over here to this side, and if I had 1 over 5 plus 2 over 5, and I add those fractions together, I would have 3 over 5. The denominator stays the same. All right, so we have it. There it is. This is the final answer here in terms of adding them together, but as always, we have to figure out what the denominator could not be, or in other words, what excluded values of x are there going to be. How do I find the excluded values of x like we've been doing? Collins. Smith. Yes, you would go back to the first part. Yes, x plus 3 and x plus 1. And what would I do to both of those? That's right. Set them equal to 0. So, we have to come down here and do x plus 3 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. What is the solution for this equation? And that goes to Jones. Negative 3 is right. So x equals negative 3. And what would be the solution for this equation? That goes to Applegate N. Negative 1. So x equals negative 1. That means x could not equal negative 3 negative 1. So come up and pick up one of those pieces of paper. This is the same scoring as the warm-up quiz. Your lottery numbers are 10, 4, 5, 7, 2. Try this basic review problem of 3 over 7 plus 5 over 8. Express your answer as a mixed number if necessary, but always reduce. The common denominator between 7 and 8 is going to be 56. And if I multiply 7 by 8 to get 56, 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 7 is 56, 5 times 7 is 35. If I add 24 and 35 together, 24 and 55 is 59. If anybody thought that was 61, then that's just terribly awful. And over 56, that would be 1 and 3 56. Here's the homework. Give these problems a try. Your homework is graded based on effort, and then if you get anything right, it's extra points after that. Photograph this quick, and then I'll put up the extra credit.